Hello, hello, my beloved. Angelica Christie here, and I'm a little bit rushed because I just come from a peace workshop, all about peace for hours and hours and hours. So let me just do something quickly here. Um, So today is, I want to talk about peace, but also to reflect on a couple of things that we so often forget so quickly because um, time goes on and it moves on. And um, we often forget, even though by remembering certain things, uh, we, we can actually create a greater change a, a greater awareness that's it and greater awareness brings a greater possibility to change what needs to be changed and so what's going on right now not just with that the coronavirus is still going on and it seems as if it's coming up again but everywhere in the world the political situation in the United States. I'm not going to talk about politics here, but we all feel that tension. We all feel that there is more um, discord in the world. There, there are more, there is more opposition. There is more fighting. There is less harmony and agreement and community. And this is actually um, a beautiful opportunity in time to go really within and check in not only how to feel how you feel um in the moment but go a little bit deeper what is really really going on where are you are you trying to hide because it is difficult we live in the winter time so to speak um it is a time of hardship and quick changes and and unexpected um, things uh, are thrown in our life that we could not anticipate and we have to deal with right so and we have to start we must start with ourselves so what is going on with you? What's going on with your awareness in the way you feel? Are, are you happy? In your, what is going on in your freedom, in your satisfaction, your sense of purpose, your ability to experience joy? What is going on in your community? What's going on there? I mean, when you think back how quickly our lives changed, not just for the few of us, but for all of us, they changed drastically, not all that long ago, a little more than two years ago. I remember that two years ago when I sat with my husband at the cancer center, the Cleveland Clinic, everything around me looked the same as if, um, the same as it was three months before the inside of the clinic looked the same but the outside world was very different you know now the inside is only that you had to wear face masks then and the disinfectants and a high degree of hygiene that we did not ex really had to um, to follow before but nothing much changed inside, but outside the world looked different. It was almost eerie to see how deserted the streets were, the interstates, no traffic. That was the only thing that, uh, that I remember I actually appreciated. The heavy traffic was gone, so much open space. 
no movie theaters were open, um, no entertainment really. Most malls were closed, hardly any stores were open. The world looked so different. Do you remember that time? Was it a time where you made more time for yourself? Did you cut down on maybe staring at the TV and maybe spending more time in conversation? Some of us did. Some of us were just in very small groups within our families. And some were very stressed about being um, locked away, so to speak, with family members that now you had to to get along with because you couldn't you couldn't really leave so unless you you traveled somehow most people couldn't even travel if you could travel you had some breaks from that but otherwise your surroundings were very restricted and you had the opportunity to create harmony and peace within that small environment that you had in your home. And some found a way to share more love, to really uh, in, investigate each other a little more to to um, tell stories, to reminisce about the future, about the past, and make plans to the future because nothing ever lasts. Even Corona uh, didn't last. I mean, the heavy duty, the time where we were all locked away, had an expiration time, right? And it, it looks as if we are not going back there, even though you never know. But this has really uh, taught us or, or showed us that peace needs to come from the inside. It lives within ourselves. And if we cannot get that peace from our inside first, then then we, we, we are going through a hard time. And a lot of people went through a hard time. And unfortunately, suicide went up a lot. And that is very, very sad. But everything that happens gives us the opportunity to wake up, to, um, to learn more, to ask questions, not the question, you have to ask the right question, not the question, why is this happening? Why is this happening to me? When will this end? No, but what can I learn from this? Where can I embrace uh, um, or see something that I wasn't able to see before? What is that teaching me? You know, so you see, these are different questions that can actually expand your awareness, expand your ability to, um, uh, to create something new. You know, and rather than um, getting into fear and, and anxiety, because that only attracts negativity, we need the opposite. We need to become still. We need to go within and allow the wisdom of our soul self to guide us to understand what is what it's really uh, what is called for in the moment. Because we only really have the moment. Yes, we plan for the future in some way, but as we have all experienced, the future is not set up set or guaranteed you there are things that we can only we are only can be assured that we have a reaction to what is happening in the future and we do control what is in our what we can control and that is limited but what we can control is our thoughts, our feelings, 
we can change our mind about something if our thoughts uh, become so negative that we are hijacked into um, a state of mind and a state of emotions that closes us down. And then we are not, um, we, are, we, are, we are not capable of seeing a solution or seeing new uh, points of view and seeing new opportunities or understand how something that is so horrific can actually be a gift if we see it with the right eyes. You know, it is intrinsically connected. Um, your soul self is so intrinsically connected to your experience, your life experience, that you want to go within and check in with your soul self, what your unique gifts are, what your your purpose is in, in each and every situation that, that comes up. And how can you share it? How can you share from your new awarenesses and new understanding? Because this is, when you are able to do this, you will survive, you will survive anything, any situation. This is how our ancestors survived. And we have so much comfort and, and I mean, the, the world is much less dangerous to our, to our physical health, take uh, epidemics away because those have always been threatening throughout history. Uh, but we are today, it's really much more dangerous how our minds can be hijacked, how our minds can be infiltrated with hatred, with um, conflict. And that creates more separation. You are here to survive anything, including this pandemic that if you hear me, if you can listen to me, you have survived it so far, right? The pandemic. Because the purpose for which you came into this lifetime has not been fulfilled yet. Yes, read this or, or listen to this again. The purpose for which you are here has not been fulfilled yet because you are alive. So the universe is has a plan for you, right? You need to be aware that whatever you focus on the most that's what you vibrate. That's the message you send out into the universe. And whatever resonance with that will come back to you. Your vibration will align with the vibration of what has not been manifested yet. If you are all about fear and um, and drama and even illness and, oh my God, what is going to happen and poor me and all of this, then that frequency attracts what is in alignment with that. This may be a shock to you. I don't want to push you. Take only what sounds true to you, okay? Whatever I share with you, and it doesn't sound true to you, it doesn't mean it's not true, but it may not be true for you or not at that time be meant for you. But can you agree with me that rather than allowing your mind and emotions to be occupied with anxiety and fear right now or at any time, you can acknowledge that whatever is um, bothering you or whatever is threatening you, whatever you, you, because if you see the news, read the news, be on, on your devices or on TV, you, you constantly hear about what's wrong in the world, about horrific things, all of the, um, the events that have shocked us, that trigger 
the fear. But then you can, you have a choice to put that down and, and say to yourself, what is it, what action can I take? What is it that I can do that is that leads to a positive outcome? I know what I'm sharing right now is not uplifting for most people. It's disconcerting and outright scary for some. So what can we do with that? Since there is really nothing that you can do when outside like coronavirus or, or, um, or war or um, uh, any threatening events, even natural disasters, you can only protect yourself in a certain way or to a certain degree. But you can take what I'm sharing with you as, as a metaphor for you right now to go within and take this and say, what if the worst is going to happen? And don't, don't wallow in that, but just take yourself out of, out of it, see it from a much higher point of view and see it with um, openness and acceptance and see what comes up for you. Ask your heart, ask your soul, what it wants to tell you, what it wants to teach you. I really believe that, especially now, is a time to go within, not to be more distracted, but to be less distracted with horrific outside um, news. To go within and to learn and understand yourself more, and also form groups um, with whom you can have a conversation, not those conversations, oh my God, oh my God, and what, what are we going to do? No, constructive, positive, uplifting, solution-oriented conversations. And yet everything starts with becoming still and allow your self-conscious mind and your emotions to bring pictures up in you, maybe phrases, maybe feelings, where else in your life you, you, you feel insecure or, or scared or unsupported or confused or overwhelmed. And maybe you want to write all of these situations down, everything that comes to mind, and then you want to ask yourself some questions. Why am I so concerned with this? Is this really, really going to come true? And of course, nobody knows, you don't know it. And, the, and when you go back in the past, the majority of worries and anxieties that you used to have about what could happen, what could come, uh, true for you, the majority of it never happened. Okay, so but rather than thinking if, if something negative or bad is going to happen or not, think about what you want to do, how you can come together in groups and create beauty and create peace and create service for others and and do something that supports you and your family and your community. Because when we give, when we allow ourselves to, to work in a positive way for others, we fill ourselves with such gifts of, um, of unex really there is so much that comes to us that we don't cannot even expect because it's these are gifts that are given
by the universe because of the positive thoughts that we have. You see, just as negative thoughts attract negative things to happen in your life, positive thoughts and positive deeds and um, purpose-oriented activities that come from your heart, your soul, and your intent to create something worthwhile and beautiful and um, not just for yourself, but also for others. It will attract unimaginable gifts, right? And that energy, if you can turn it into passion, the passion for yourself to, to, to celebrate your life. Every day when you wake up, it's a gift. You see, your life and that you are alive right now has such an incredible purpose. No other times in our life are your presence on this earth as important as right now, as, as today, for this year, for the next year, for the next decade. Sometimes we feel so passionate about something that we believe it's true, that it is difficult for us to, to, to see clearly because we, I mean, when we feel passionate about something, we can slip into the passion of, um, oh my God, oh, oh my God, this is, this is all so horrible. This is all so dangerous. This is all so threatening. Don't do that. You have to take your emotions because passion, the positive passion, when you have a beautiful idea and you want to bring this to fruition uh, and you have a goal behind it. That's a different kind of passion, but very often we slip into the negative passion of we get so, that energy can be very powerful as well. And maybe passion is not the right word, but you know what, um, what it feels like when you, when you get into a conversation and you're so passionate about feeling that something is dangerous or feeling in a certain way. Don't do that. Then disconnect from that emotion and go to your heart and your soul because your heart and your soul always speak wisdom to you. So don't make anything so much about the outer. Right now is the time to go within. Yeah? Sometimes we don't, we forget that quiet time. And it doesn't have to be meditation. It can just be quiet time. Maybe time to journal, maybe time to spend in nature. As I said in the last episode, peace is really finding the inner peace and peace, nature can be violent, can be passionate in a, in a hurricane, nature is passionate. And yet there is a purpose for that as well. And there is order and peace in that as well. So when you can go out in nature, and can accept the power and also the beauty of nature. And that nature is within you as well. Your passion can go in the passion of anger. It can go in the passion of love and bliss. Passion is part of you. And it is not opposite of peace. Peace is always there. Peace, love, and peace is your essence. And yet we can get triggered in different directions. But what I'm trying to tell you today is pull yourself back into stillness, into reflection, into listening, listening to your soul. And sometimes it helps 
to take your hand and put it on your heart and ask your heart because your heart knows all the answers to every question you have. Ask your heart, heart, tell me the answer to this question that I have. Beloved heart, beloved soul, beloved I am presence, because this is your higher self, your I am presence. Tell me what you want to share with me. What is the truth here? And then just listen. Yes? Okay, so this was a little bit inspired by um, the peace workshop that I went uh, to and I just shared with you what came to mind and it was less structured than I usually have it because I didn't have time to, to put anything in particular together. But just connect with your I am presence. Acknowledge, put your hands together and sometimes it helps to pray. Sometimes it helps to, to put your hands on your heart. Sometimes it helps to put your hands on your mind, on your head. And tell your mind to quiet down, but love it. Wherever you put your hands, your hands have healing qualities. Allow your hands to heal your heart to heal your brain, to heal every part of your body that you touch and acknowledge yourself as immortal and that you are here for a purpose. And that purpose will be revealed to you if you go within and ask. And sometimes it shifts a little bit. So be open to new input, to new ideas. All right. Thank you for listening to me. This was all that I can that I have to share with you today. So I honor you. I honor the time that you spend with me. And ask me any questions. Connect with me. I love you. I have your back. I am your sister. And know that you are magnificent. And you are powerful beyond your imagination. Don't ask your brain, ask your heart, ask your soul. And you will get the right answer. Your heart knows and your soul knows the power that you are. Okay. Until we speak again, bye-bye for now.